Right, thank you for sticking with us guys. Here we have Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses by Mr. Daddy Dean. Hey guys, so this is my CC, the Duelist of the Roses. So we're just going to basically start. We have two sides, this is based on the War of the Roses, which is a face of Britain. So we're just going to basically, as I'm, I'll do a countdown, and I'll say start when I press enter, and that's when the timer will start. So we'll do a three, two, one, start. So basically, this, um, so you might be wondering why I've not uh, picked a deck yet. We, in this game, you don't time the start of the game. So basically, when you're doing the run, well, at the start, you'll uh, make sure you collect um, start, but you'll use A as your um, name of the game. So then you get the zombie deck, which is the best deck for the speed run because uh, just all the fusions are really good. And uh, yeah, we've got there you go. All the fusions are just um, pretty, just very good. All the power ups you can get, and then with the deck edit, you create. Um, all the zombie monsters and you get all like the yammy and wasteland and uh, field spells so this is not like most other Yu-Gi-Oh games as you'll see coming into it we currently just on a spam X part of the game but we'll get to the first major point which is um, the deck edit and then after that we'll get into the first duel and you'll see why it's a bit different so if you're wondering I'll be looking down uh, I've got the deck edit notes in front of me all the passwords we need so it's 13 cards so hopefully I can do this correctly and not have to waste a little bit of time trying to uh, get the deck right so there we go this is a bit boring because I've got to just make sure I can uh, I focus on getting this right So I'll try and explain each card as I do it, but I've got to try and focus on getting the um, the right letters. So the first card we're doing is actually um, a card called uh, King Tiger Wangyu, which is pretty much um, very good on Weevil because he gets double damage. But along with that, um, King Tiger gets the two space movement speed uh, as his passive ability. The next card there was Balrog. He is a lab killer, so he's good against Jasper and Labyrinth Ruler. So we're trying to focus on the uh, the deck, like I say, just to get this right. Next card is Megamorph. Um, it's got the same effect, pretty much as in the card game. It powers up your monster, so nothing special there. Don't have to explain that card as much. Um, uh, next card was Green Kappa there. It um, copies the highest ability monster on the field, so it's pretty good if you can if you're playing against one of the final bosses. And that was Slate Warrior, who um, is immune to Crush Zone and gets double. He gets a power up on it. So that's why you want him for um, certain duels. Yeah, so that's uh, so wasteland again, feel spell, um, a certain radius of the, the I'll call it the map for now. The field um, will turn into wasteland, which is good for the, our zombie monsters. Same Miami, same effect. Uh, turns everything into dark. Uh, good for zombie monsters. Uh, Mammoth Graveyard there. Um, he will. He is used to make one of our, our best monsters in the deck, which is a uh, the Great Mammoth. We call him G Mammy. Uh, L. So just dragon zombie again, another dragon. Um, on the power up, he's one of the best cards. And then D hole moves our deck leader. And then we're coming to the last final um, three cards of the deck edit. So not mucked up yet. So touch wood. Um, 
I've not actually, I've not really explained the cards while doing this, so I'm doing quite well, I'd say. Again, uh, the cannon card there, another lab killer. Use him on Jasper and other, maybe other duel that uses lab. Uh, same with him, you can use on Pegasus as well. And that's a deck edit. So I was pretty pretty clean I'd say. Didn't muck it up to get a bit slow. So I just make sure I got it correct. So the first duel is against Rex Raptor. He uses uh, dinosaur cards, if you didn't guess from the anime. He keeps the same um, deck. All the um, all the duelists keep their own same deck, so um, Mai will use all the harpy ladies um, and so forth. So let's see what I get. Okay, so we'll go with um, we're doing a strategy called Safe Rex here. So we'll summon G Mammy here with a power up. We'll move him twice. Now you move your deck leader here. Okay, so let's do. So we've got a card called um, Mooka Mooka, I didn't explain that, hopefully I don't fuse over it, shouldn't do, I might do though, I might make Stone Ghost, I might make Stone Ghost, I did, nice, so um, you'll see Mooka Mooka's effect here, it gains 300 damage for every monster in the graveyard, so as you saw it has like almost 4000 damage already, so um, the card is very OP. And with this strategy, this duel is, uh, this game is a lot about RNG manipulation, so let's see if we got it. We did, cool. So what we can do now is um, just move him here and then move that. And then he might start trying to defend himself, but then I can just, um, if I get lucky and check my hand, we may actually be able to end the duel here. And um, we did get lucky, so we now just summon another G-Mammy. That monster is going to be under 2100 damage, um, most likely it should be. So we should actually win. 2100. So we do 900 damage and then that's exactly enough. Well, 100 more than we needed to, and then that's the first duel already done. Um, got the didn't get the minute that I would like, but like I said, I knew I had enough damage. I checked my hand and I knew that the card was going to be 2100 because it always is. So there's a strategy that you do is you summon a card on the right that's stronger than 2100, and then you have a card on the left that's also stronger than 2100, and then you can kill the card on the that he summons and then when you move he just stands he basically stays still and just lets you attack him twice. But he also can play a card called Eternal Rest, which destroys all your zombie monsters and if he does that you basically just surrender. So I'll try and explain each duel as I do it. Um, sometimes I might I might just um just like I might just forfeit randomly and surrender and you might be like, why is he just surrendered? But it's fine, sometimes you do lose. Um, you can't compare this to uh, Forbidden Memories, where if you uh, lose, you have to go right back to the start. Okay, so we will... I'll just play Slave Warrior here, and then play Okazaki next turn. Yeah, so Okazaki again does the same in the anime, or the card game. I think it does 500 damage in the card game as well, so it does 500 damage here. So it's pretty good. So this is a duel you want King Tiger, T King Tiger on. Um, so we got King Tiger here, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to move forward, now he's going to... I could have played Green Kappa actually, and defending myself, but I'm going to take the hit from his, um, most likely going to be Gokobor, I'm going to guess. Um, I need to get rid of that Slate Warrior as well, probably should attack the monster maybe if I could have, or defending myself. So let's, he might attack my card, he probably won't know. Yeah, so what is it? Needleworm, so it's pretty, pretty weak monster. I can take another attack off it, which is um, which means when I do this, um, I can then just actually. I'll play D hole. 
get, get him to move his deck leader. Needleworm can't attack me. I'll move Slate Warrior back just so he can't move uh, Needleworm. I'll do more damage to him and then I can play King Tiger next turn. So, let's see what he does. So he didn't do what he can do, which um, you all know uh, from him. Okay, I'm going to reference anime where he plays as a um, cocoon monster and then he usually plays that in the top corner. So, and if we get power up, we can win. We didn't get power up, but I'm going to tank the hit. This could be risky, but most likely he'll move away. On the gate attack. Could have, could have affected the trap card. So if you think the AI would be smart, is he going to be sm He is going to be smart. Yeah, so he's probably just won here. So that's my bad judgement, I thought I could go for the blitz. Yeah, he's won, so like I said, a loss is a loss. We'll make up time on different duels. Forgot about the neg negate attack. The choke is already happening. Nah, but like I said, we just do it again. Doesn't matter. There'll be more duels we'll surrender on. If we get the not get good duels on um, when we face Seto, we don't get we'll get to Seto RNG manipulation eventually. But we can get to Seto and we could be there genuinely for a while if we don't get the right minute, don't get D hole. You know. We have two Mammy two great um Mammoth graveyards enemy, so that's two chances on Seto and then you also have two D holes. So there's four like four out of, so you've got ten ten like out of ten chance, like, you know, four cards out of forty, so ten to actually try it. So we'll play a bit safe. I won't bomb it for like I did last time. Got the same basically the same hand again. Um we'll play Sate Warrior in front of us just so we can't actually um damage us with that monster. So again, I don't really need to explain it. Um, he always moves to his right unless you um, move your card to the right. I'm going to play Yami this turn because then he can't move his card twice. Oh, it's infinite dismissal. So that's deleted. No, it's spellbound for three turns. So it won't activate until three turns. So Slate Warrior is going to win this. It's not actually, okay. So um, when Slate Warrior dies as well, he, because he's um, he has a ability that turns everything into crush around him, so that uh, Rose Spectrum will die actually. So what I can do now is, now I'll... So you play a card in front of him, and he'll stay where he is. So what I can do now is I can um, summon a zombie and then attack him, and then he'll move, and then I can move my deck leader forward. And then Yami will be coming back soon. So we'll play Pumpkin King here, and then I can move my deck. I'll move my deck leader. Oh, it's not Pumpkin King actually. My bad. But we'll still be able to kill it because um, Wood Remains has a. Um, the passive ability on Wood Remains, so the effect ability, is that it gains 500 attack when it is flipped up. And Yami's got two turns, sorry, so I'll move him here. So he's going to play a card in front, probably enough to destroy it. Or not, okay. So I'll make Zombie Dragon here. Again, he could play a card that's really strong and just kill me, which should be very unfortunate. But, you know, you never know. Did the same mistake again. Have I done the same mistake again? No, I've not. Nice. So Yami can play now, but it won't. Um, so you can tell that's... Uh, I'm going to attack what that is. It's probably a spell card. It's not. So I knew it was weak because it was all in um, lab, uh, Crush, sorry. So I know it's below 1500, so it gain, crush, same in the AI card game, 1500, uh, it'll do less than. So all I need now is 200, and we have that. So we finally did Weevil, a bit longer than expected, but you know, that's why we have the the estimates 20 minutes longer in my PB, just think for this, uh, for these sort of things. So finally did it, there we go. We, um, 
we move on to darkness ruler I think it is the way each do each person has their own um, like you because on this side of the game you can choose whatever um, do list you want to go face sorry you can basically just do what you want people do like you can do I guess you can optimize it from where your cursor is so because we are where we are right now it may probably makes more sense maybe to go to Keith or Pegasus I just go down to Darkness Ruler. Gets out of the way. It's one of the easiest duels in the game. Let's see if I get the good RNG. I'll talk to you through it. It's pretty simple though. So you move your deadly to forward. Right. So we made Dragon Zombie there. So currently we're not going to have enough damage of what I'm going to do. So you move this card forward. So you're thinking, oh okay, he moved forward, you can attack him. Okay, so all you do is now, is again you move your deadly leader again. Uh, that's fine. Sl Slate will already have been perfect, but zombie warrior power up's enough. Mingo, 2200. And you move this card forward. And what he should do, please do it. He didn't do it, okay. He's meant to move forward, and then when he moves forward, he um, summons a card and you can just attack him. However, he wasn't, feel, uh, he wasn't feeling like doing it. So that's probably a trap card. It's not, okay. So I'm gonna trap him in here. Uh, I've got g man anyway. So I didn't get them in it. So if some of these, all the Yu-Gi-Oh people, who are, if you're in the chat, you can all go peppy hands and Bible thumps because that's just the game, you know, or oh, RNG manipulation, but sometimes it doesn't work. So he's basically stuck here. He might summon, like, uh, summon skill or something, but he didn't, so... A little bit of time loss compared to what you should do it, but... He didn't summon a monster to attack one of my monsters or anything like that, so... Again, that's Darkness Ruler. Pretty, pretty easy. If you actually get the manipulation, it should be really easy. Um, so the next duel... We will do Pegasus. I'll choose Pegasus. So I'll do the uh, the route I do in my um, in my as I would do if I was running the game, like with a timer and stuff. So we'll do Pegasus. Pegasus Keith Ishtar, Lab Ruler, and then Necromancer. So if you're wondering, Darkness Ruler is Panic from the anime. Just in case you're wondering why is it called something different. So that's why. Right, okay, so we actually got pretty lucky here. We got a lab killer instantly. So we can just run it forward to Pegasus. So what we want now is a fuel spell. And we also want him to play a trap card. Because if, if I um, get my fuel spell, so please be a trap. It is. So as you can see there, um, the card is spellbound and the trap card, uh, the spell card would not be a spellbound. Um, so what I could do is I'm going to... I'm just going to summon over this because he can't move twice and if he plays another trap card we'll be fine but if he plays a monster then you know he'll, he'll lose um, he'll of course lose the fight because he'll take a lot of damage because it's on tune so because we played a monster even though it's not got double movement he is going to run away um, it's quite unlucky but if I, go, if I get a fuel spell it still doesn't matter I'm gonna save D Ho actually for uh, next turn. Because I'm gonna move forward and he's gonna run away so I can play D Ho and run it forward. So I can still get a fuel spell. Maybe I should play uh, D Ho, then I could now attack him with uh, Great Mammoth. Maybe it is. Would have been a better choice. Um, but I'm gonna try and get another G Mammy. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to activate it now, I'm going to move over. And what I'm going to do, do is, I'm going to do this, I'm going to try and bait him to move to the right, so that he can't summon a toon monster and attack me. So he's done that. So again, feel spell would be very appreciated. 
he's got Dark Rabbit there. So I could kill Dark Rabbit with another um, G Mammy if I get it. Um, so even though he's not a toon, like as in, like as you can see, I've got King Tiger, okay. Um, we're gonna attack him just with King Tiger. However, I need to move my debt leader away because uh, Dark Rabbit will attack me. So this Pegasus can be a pain if you don't get a fuel spell because he just starts doing this. If that face down card again is a strong monster, I lose. Um, like I said, I'm hoping he just attacks me with Dark Rabbit. It is, okay. Yeah, we've lost. That's unlucky. We didn't get a fuel spell, so... Yeah, there you go. So, Pegasus gain. Very typical to lose on if you don't get the right cards. I could have maybe, like I said, played D hole quicker, but then G Mammy doesn't have the double movement speed. So again, it would just be a chase, uh, a case of just running and trying to attack him eventually, and then he just keeps getting a move side to side and then playing trap cards. So because we didn't get a fuel spell, you know, if you get the lab killer, you really want a fuel spell. So we didn't get it. So we just do Pegasus again. Getting unlucky here. And the practice run that TD actually got the fuel spell and the lab killer. So this is this is looking like positive in case I when we get to settle. I'm looking forward to it. So we got the fuel spell there, but we didn't get the actual um, the car we want. So I'm going to keep the fuel spell because you want to be, where I placed King Tiger Wanghu. You want the you want your debt leader to be, so you can place the fuel spell where King Tiger is now without having to move it at all. Same with D-Hole, if you get D-Hole early. So again, power increase, obviously a monster. It's in defense mode though. Did I get a lab killer? I did, and I got D-Hole. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Might be bad call, I'm going for the call. Play lab killer, play wasteland. So I know that's a monster, not a trap card, so I need to make sure I don't um, actually get hit by it here. Probably should have discarded some cards as well. I'm going to keep King Tiger there to see if I can get him to move forward to do the RNG minute. So he's, okay, he's going to kill King Tiger. Oh, okay, it's a trap card then. I think it's a trap card, has to be. He probably would attack my monster. Oh, it's Tremendous Fire. There you go. It's Invisible Wire. No, it was. Again, probably should have got rid of Barrel Rock. Not like it matters. Um, so I know, like I said, because I know that's a trap card, um, I got Slate Warrior. You know what, I'm going to get rid of this, and this, and this. So because I know that's a monster, I can just bomb Wasteland forward here. And then if I get a G-Mammy, or even Slate Warrior, will do. There we go. Like I said, there's the G-Mammy, power up on Wasteland, got the two fuel spells. That's how it's meant to be done. You can instantly summon uh, G-Mammy here. You're on double movement. Pegasus has got nowhere to go now. His monster that he powered up into the defense mode probably isn't strong enough because he's not on tune anymore. He's got nowhere to go and that, that's pretty much it. So let's see what he does. I'm interested. He's going to start trying to run away. He might defend himself. He doesn't. So again, you would think in your head, oh, why are you bombing, you know, your G Mammy forward, he should just defend himself. But the AI in this game casually are smart, but speedrun wise, I don't know what they do. They just never defend him themselves whatsoever. They've all got very specific movement patterns as well, where if you move cards to a certain place, you can have a face down monster in front of some of them and they won't move. They'll just wait until you attack them. So it's very strange why they do that. But the next duel is Keith Well, and if we get good, a first good hand here, top deck as we call it, it's again a very easy RNG manipulation where I can talk about where the um, not defending themselves is very, um, very, it just happens for some reason, they just don't do anything. So, but yeah, I was going to talk about the how the game is very different compared to any other Yu Gi Oh game like Forbidden Memories or something, like that kind of came around the same time. So it kind of looks like a chessboard. Um, it you know compared to what Forbidden Memories is like, which is just like kind of a normal, a normal version. 
This hand might not work, but it might at the same time. So 1900, it might not. I don't think it will. We'll see. If he plays a card in front of him. Right, so we got the bad RNG. Um, bad hand, so... Remember when I talked about how you uh, forfeit duels on purpose? I'm going to check my hand, but most likely it's just going to be a forfeit. Got Pumpkin King, but it's not worth it. So we lost to uh, the so-called card professor, as he proclaims himself to be. So again, another duel. What are we at now, like? Lost three already? Yeah. Good start, good start. But again, we didn't get the minip. You need, like I said, probably not a monster over 2100. But sometimes he won't play any good cards. And then sometimes he can whip out, like, really strong monsters if he gets power-ups. This is a really bad hand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the lab killer strategy, which means um, we're gonna wing this. I could have just forfeited a game, but I'm gonna try this. So he's gonna move forward twice now. Probably should just use the lab killer to kill the cards on the far right. See, he's a weak monster here. So what he'll do is he'll he'll protect himself now. If he keeps doing that. It's just, he just does. Um, actually, if I get a terrible hand again, I won't do it. <laughs> oh my god. I could have carried that on there. Um, summoned Fiend's Hand of Velvet Crystal, Violet Crystal, sorry. And then attacked, but then he start running away. So, again, terrible hand. Um, this can be just a lot of forfeiting duels without getting the good RNG. And today, we're not getting the good RNG on this. It just happens. Basically, you want either Pumpkin King, G Mammy, Dragon Zombie, um, even King Tiger with double power up maybe can do it, but most likely you want like G Mammy because it's got 2700. Nice, we got the two components of G. We got the card for G Mammy, we didn't get it. So we'll do the D hole strategy. So I think he'll still play a monster in front of him. But that means I can move, he'll play it and then move and I can summon. Oh, he doesn't, okay. So all he needs is a zombie. Thank you. I actually got the fear there. I generally thought I didn't get one. So the problem is now, my deck leader is not in a good position here to, um, once he moves to the right and then starts defending himself, um, I can't like I need a we need to wait more time. So what we oh actually I think he wins. Fifty? Are you joking me? And that car is where it needed to be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We. This is actually very troll. We get the best card and he summons Pendulum Swing. And then he's just going to move to his left now. And then we're going to have to start defending ourselves. Unless I get a power up, which we might do. I've got a Dragon Zombie. If he didn't have a, um, a monster in defense mode, we could have done something here. Oh, then again, we could kill the monster in defense mode, and he's, uh, he's, please? Yes, thank you, okay. So now he's, uh, he needs to move into G-Mammy, and then we win. So, I'm going to tank, I need to tank the hit off the Pendulum card, but he, he can't do anything now. So, we at least we win this one. Again, took us a while, but we got, we, um, well, I'd, I played around the, the fact that I hoped it was a trap card, <laughs> or a monster in defense. Do we have time for a quick donation? Yeah, you're on your go. We have an $8 donation from Tiger. Yo, Daddy Dean, you gotta show Seto who's boss today. Wish you many lucks from me and the other Duelist of the Roses folks. It's good seeing this cool cat. Thank you. Thank you for the donation from the DR. 
DR, DOTR community. Thank you as well. Well, on this RN, on based of these uh, runs, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna show Stealth Boss. Lost four duels already. Is that two, one to Weevil, one to Pegasus, two to Keith? I think. Maybe. So this uh, graveyard slot machine, I've not explained it, is um, quite good for casual because you can get really good cards. If you get three in a row, you can get all the um, special cards as well. You can get like a, I think it's a, maybe the right leg of Exodia or maybe the left one. But with the speed run, doesn't matter. Um, doesn't matter really for this. So, so is this turn next? Uh, she uses again. It's a, this is another kind of RNG manipulation sort of um, strategy where you play cards specific areas or tiles as we call them as their squares. You can call them squares or tiles, and she will just move forward. But if you get Slate Warrior, you can just not do that. So I'm gonna actually just discard this hand to be honest. Could have kept a different. I could have kept one of the zombies up, but it doesn't really matter. I'll get Zombie Warrior, so at least I know one of her Aqua Monsters she uh, won't kill it. So she'll move forward. Uh, she can play Mirror Wall, which halves your um, um, damage when you attack. So again, you just play a card here. What did I get? Uh, I got Yami, so I'm gonna keep Yami here actually. And then what you what you're meant to do? We don't get any field spells. Is game watch. She should move forward. She won't if she doesn't play a card in front of her. You'll move forward and attack on the wasteland spot. However, because we got Yami, we're gonna flip summon it and place it so that um, we can move on the crush now, and then we can have G Mami double move, and then we'll win the duel. And also because we have um, actually, I'm also gonna move the zombie warrior one turn up because I want to try and bait the um, uh, her into attacking. I also got Muka Muka, but I'm pretty sure I've not got enough cards in my graveyard to uh, one shot her. So it's no point wasting that and not having it on double movement. But again, I could have just summoned over it uh, next turn. So she should just move even to behind her. She won't defend herself. Because she's on crush, um, your monsters, even though they're over 1500, can still attack. Like I said, her monster monster's not strong enough because it's on the Yami Darkness square now. And then she'll, forf she'll end her turn. Then we'll win next turn, so it's all good. So we'll lose the damage boost, but we'll still win on the um, on this turn. So we are coming up to one of the I would I say it's one of the most annoying duels um, because you can manip him, but you also need like certain you can you need Dho or Lab Killer, or it just becomes a real pain or just moving your deck leader a lot. So G Mammy is short for Great Mammoth of Goldfiend, or Find, whatever it is. You combine a zombie with a mammoth graveyard and it makes it. We just call it G Mammy in the community because we're not gonna say like pumpkin pumpkin of kings of zombie you know, whatever the pumpkin king's called. We just shorten cards down, you know. And if I ever use green kappa I got two D holes, <laughs> as as you do. Uh, I'll keep slave warrior as well. I'll, just, uh, I'll keep another uh, Cool. So again, green kappa. If I ever use it to win a duel, you can all spam kappa on chat. Because why not? Just looking at time, we're already 30 minutes in. I'm terrible at the game. So you get them in it, so you want them to move over, and then you want to like keep a face down card and then he'll move on to you, and with the darkness you can attack him. So let's see if he does it. I might get lucky, I might not. Um, you know what, I'll use Slate Warrior because he won't get double movement. So he should attack me, he usually, oh unless that's a certain card, he'll put in defense mode. So come on, you know you want to move over, move over, there we go, and attack me. This is what you want. If he attacks you, am I getting it? No, I'm not. Right, lab killer. No. Slip over here. So sometimes they can attack you. So the issue we have here is um, we're not on double movement, but oh, 
This could work. I don't know if he'll move, run away because it's spellbound. He probably will. He doesn't. Ah, because it's that. So uh, this card doesn't take damage from battle. However, now we get a wee bit lucky here because Slate Warrior now turns into Crush Zone and then it will kill the card. But I can't summon any good monster on Crush because it would die. So, uh, yeah, a bit of an, mm, I don't know. What did I get? What's my hand? Okay. Probably summon Dark Assailant here. And then hope he attacks me. And then I can move over. Because he'll move along to the right. Summon a card to defend himself. Yeah, that's annoying. Okay, so a lab killer would be quite handy right now. So I'm actually going to do this. What you, what you can do is you can start moving. You can generally just sort of move back. Like, kill your own monster and then he'll just move back into like, keep it, he might just move back along to you. But I'm kind of going to... Don't want to move my deck leader to be honest. Just move him to kill one of my cards. So, also like the AI. Cool. Okay, he didn't. He didn't move. Uh, maybe, maybe that's some manipulation. But uh, he just, he just decided to end. He was like, you know, what? I don't want to be here anymore. Dean, you're too far behind. Let's just get, let, let's get it going. He's like, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take that. I'll just let you stay still and lose. So, there we go. He decided to lay. Uh, not wanna live anymore. So the first part of the game is longer than the second part. So if you're wondering, oh, you're not gonna make estimate because you're already this etc far ahead or blah blah blah. You know, the second part is a lot shorter. So this part is just a bit of a trek to get through. So I've been glancing at chat, and um, we have, of course, we've got the Yu-Gi-Oh! coming in here. So we have, um, I'm just going to make g Mammy to be honest. There's no point trying to do the, the minute. I may as well just summon g Mammy and hope that he doesn't win. Um, so great Mammoth of Gofind. There we go. But yeah, so we have everybody. I'm pretty sure most people from the, the community of this game are in here. So if you have any other questions that I'm not covering, they'll probably be able to help you. I might lose this because of the power-up. It's most likely Skelegor with the power-up. I'm going to go for it. it. It is going to be, isn't it? Yeah, Clum Zombie. So he likes to summon cards with power-ups because he's he just does. And he always has a power-up. And to think that Clum Zombie base damage, a two-star monster has that much damage with one power-up, it's pretty insane. Um, so I don't know if he, he might still move forward. You never know. I don't think he will, though. Yeah, I might just forfeit this. No, no, actually, we're good. This works. This will be slow, but it'll work. No, this is fine, actually. This is perfect. This is perfect, because if you think about it now, that Clum Zombie isn't on a uh, Wasteland Square, and I can move my, de I can move my uh, deck leader away from him. And then G-Mammy should be the strongest monster. Do we have time for a donation? Yes, on you go. Donation. We have a $30 donation from Brian Houston. Congratulations from Esports Scotland for hitting $1,000 and smashing your record. Thank you very much. Thank you for the but donation. We would like to also announce that we have managed to raise more money for Young Minds during this event than the sum of the previous events. So thank you guys so much for all the donations that have been coming in throughout the duration of this event. Yeah, thank you all for the donations, guys, and helping support a good cause. So Green Kappa will take the damage off G Mammy here, so I can uh, I can defend myself off the Clum Zombie, and then I should win next turn. So unless I get Okazaki, but I'll just move to Great Mammoth here, and I can do it off that way. So there's no way he can defend himself because I can move double movement, so I can move down along or up and like you know up along, so, or left. Unless it's like a trap card, but it's not. So we're on to the. Um, 
we're starting to move on to the boss fights of um, this side. So we um, fight Richard, and then we move on to Settle, and then we move on to um, Skull Knight. So also, we're very lucky that um, the fact that uh, even though I've lost some duels and RNG's been bad, uh, you know, we've lost some time. Uh, I started early, so that helps. <laughs> helps the cause. So we'll get to parts of the game where it's just basically mash X simulator and it becomes very tedious. But that just happens. Can't do much about it. That's most like most runs can be like that. You know, when you've got all scrollers in this game, you've got credits and just mashing X a lot. I guess you can be like that Pokemon though who want to mash X or like other games like that, sort of like card games or stuff like that. It can just be a lot of text spam. So we got Richard here, so if you... Pretty sure if you play a... When you play a field spell, he won't play a card in front of him. Because if you play a monster, if you move your deck leader and then play a monster and then move the monster forward, he will just bomb the monster forward. As you can see, he could have flipped some of his monster if my card was here and it attacked. Also, if you have a card face down in front of Richard, this is the guy who won't move forward. He'll just stay where he is. So I'm going to hope... I'm pretty sure I've got a decent hand if I get a zombie. And also, he can't double movement anyway. So I've got a zombie. So I've got a 2700 monster. And because he's not on warrior, or sort of the grass, his best card should not win. So it's only a beautiful headhunter. So that would have been 2100 on the grass. But uh, G Mammy wins. So because I can move twice now and I flip my card, I'm pretty... Okay, it doesn't run away. I thought he would off, but it's net. You have to be right in front of him for him to move away. But um, g Mammy loses... All zombies, sorry, lose damage on Mountain. So... We we'll, um, should just win next turn, unless the card he powered up is super strong. Because he should just move along and he can't defend himself. There we go, and he's lost. So that was easy, unless he's got a trap. But we know that card's not a trap, and that one could be. So we need to make sure... Just move my deck leader along, just in case. And it's not. Cool. So that's Richard done. So even though we lost time on Pegasus and stuff, like these sort of duels where if you don't get a field spell, he can just summon all these crazy warrior monsters as a um, good time save. But uh, now we're up to where the donation said we would be. Big Seto. Um, this is very RNG manipulation. We could get this first try, or we could be here for 10 times um, if we don't get uh, a, a monster. So you want a monster over 1800, and then you want him to move forward, and then or you can get a uh, D-hole. So D-hole is Dimension Hole. Uh, I've been using it a couple times in this run. Basically, it lets you move your deck leader where D to where uh, Dimension Hole is played. So what you do is you move your deck leader, you play Dimension Hole, flip it forward one turn, and your deck leader's moved like a lot of spaces already. So it'll be like four tiles, I think. Because you move your the ones, yeah, round three or four. So this is where this is the uh, mash X simulator. So it's pretty much just spamming X here. Not really much else to do. So it's again, like I said, it's, it's a set in the War of the Roses. So here we go. Let's talk about War of the Roses and Richard and all these people. Oh, all the War of the Roses people are turned into Yu-Gi-Oh characters. And pure usual, Pegasus betrays everybody and sides with Yugi. And then the, I would say one of the most strange things about this game, even though like you are like you're not Yugi or Seto, Yugi's like, oh yeah, um, I can't beat Seto by the way. You've got to do it, even though you know when I think about anime, Yugi's the best. But yeah, he, you make, he makes you fight Seto, and it's like, okay, cheers. Thank you for that. It's like, why, why are you doing that? It's fun. The memes of this. Right, here we go. I'm, I'm getting it first turn. I'm going to get Great Mammoth Power Up, I believe. Exactly. Heart of the Cards. Oh, I got D-Hole. That'll do. D-Hole does. That'll do the job. So... Also, I'm quite proud of myself. 
I never quoted Pegasus saying Yugi Boy when we bought Pegasus. I thought I would off. There we go, everybody's saying in the background, hope you can hear them. I was gonna do it, but I was like, nah, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. So, God, we're almost 45 minutes in. I keep looking at the timer, it's like, this is not PB in, by the way. So, Salem has double movement. Uh, so, this will summon most light. I think it's gonna be. Oh, it's Pumpkin King, nice. So, we only need a 1700 monster. So, he'll move back to the middle square. Now, if I don't have a strong enough monster, then, you know, we don't. We don't win, pretty much. So he'll move his card, place him, he'll move it forward so we can attack him. Um, and if we do this, please. Uh, this is terrible hand. This is not good. We didn't get the heart of the cards. I don't know what card that is. That could be blue eyes. Don't think it is though. Uh, I'll brunt the attack. I'll see what I'll see what he does. He could win though if he attacks Gruesome Goo. He doesn't. Destiny Jaw, so Mirror Force or Ryoku, I think. Might be wrong. Oh, it's Judgment. So it's not got double movement. So what I might do here. If I got King Tiger or Wang Hu, we would have won. I'm going to play Yami. And uh, as you can see, Pumpkin King's been hit by it. So Pumpkin King now gets double movement. And he's going to be our saviour. Uh, what, what I can do though is uh, just move my deck leader. And hopefully he moves his Judge Man forward. Okay, probably got Blue Eyes there. Oh. Or I get G Mami and win. So I can still be so twenty two hundred. Only I need Okazaki, so anything. Anything would help. Um I'm gonna play I'm gonna actually I'm gonna dump this hand, but I'm gonna keep my my one of my lab killers. Because I don't wanna play a lab killer. Like, move it forward and then lose. If he attacks with the blue eyes. Like again, I'm dumping my hand, you know, Muka Muka, uh, even Slate Warrior, Okazaki, I might have discarded it already. You know, anything helps us here. So it's not blue eyes. And that's not blue eyes. So here we go. Green Kappa will do. Um, so, okay, so 24. Yeah, I think it's enough. So this will gain 400 damage, and it's a. It's a it's 100 more. There we go. Did settle first try. Took a bit longer than it should do if you get the manip or D hole, but settle first try. I'll take it compared to what other random annoying things have been happening throughout this run. So that's that's all these sort of card game speed runs, isn't it? You need you need to hope for the RNG. Sorry, if you don't get it, you don't get it. So. So this is the last duel of um, the red side, side with Yugi. Then we get the credits, and then we get to Cyber Settle and fight off Yugi's best people, best pals and all that. Like Mai, Tristan, Joey. And when we get to Mai, I'm sure people will be spamming, or my Yugi will they'll be spamming that. Um, this game, for some reason, Mai is Yugi's mum. Don't know why. She just is. <laughs> I got told that by somebody. If it's wrong, he can... He can get the abuse, but it's, you know, in this game, Maya is Yugi's mom. Don't know why. But yeah, hopefully you all, like I say, we get to the last duel on this side. Hopefully you all enjoying the run so far. Like I say, it's a very different Yu-Gi-Oh game. People always either know, know about it from their friend or they forgot about the game. Like, they forgot it exists. So, you know, it's a very strange game, but it's fun. So yeah, this is, um, you might recognise this guy, I'm pretty sure he's in Forbidden, both of them are in Forbidden Memories. Um, there's another one, but he wears like the white off Settles team. Um, I've not played Forbidden Memories, so I don't exactly know. But. So what you want to do here is, um, you either, oh that's, 
Nah, I forgot they combine. You know what? This works. This this is fine. This doesn't matter. They just take. It, it'll. Nah, it doesn't really matter actually. He'll still play the same card. He'll still play a try. He'll move forward. He won't. Sorry, he won't move forward. He'll. Uh, he might move. Does he move forward? No, he does move forward. That's a trap card. Hundred percent trap card. So what you do? Move forward. You just play any monster, and you try and attack it. And it's mostly like a gravity bind. No, it's not. Okay, it's widespread ruin. Um, usually it's gravity bind. So because he's on crush, he thinks he can't be attacked. Um, so what you want is you want you want to place a field spell to my right and then be able to attack him. So you'll move back, right? So this is where the RNG manipulation of this duel starts. I'm going to check my hand. Got it. Nice. So I've got Yami. So as you can see here, it won't touch where he's going to move forward. And the AI of this duel, and most duels, and probably all of them to be honest, is programmed to think that they won't get a, they won't get hit on crush. So he'll move forward straight into my monster. And then he thinks he won't get attacked. And because we got Yami down, um, we won't... It'll still do 500 damage, but he'll get damage increased by 300, so he's 800. And then I'm pretty sure we got G Mami power up, so that's 2200 plus how much Violet Crystal gives us. Actually, I need a. So, I actually want to do this a different way. Let's do it this way. Just do it that way. So, I discard more cards for Mukumuko. So, if the crush wasn't there, we would, um, we would win. But the crush is there, so we can't really do much about it. Because if you don't put the crush there, he won't he doesn't he won't move forward because he'll he'll start playing all his crazy strong monsters that he has in his deck. But because the crush zones there, he can't play his cards. So also these these two guys have cards. So the other guy, um, who we call Shakra, is his main so their nickname Skull Knight because Skull Knight is his card, um, his deck leader, and then Shakra because Shakra is the other um, the same guy but it's like his brother or something in the lore. Is a deck leader, um, so he won't move. He'll he, he'll play a super strong monster that he used force on in front of us because it's on um, the dark. And um, getting G Mami um, powered up there is actually um, promoted already. I've not had that. It's never happened before in speedrun history. No, I'm joking. But um, it's not happened. And that's usually it takes a while for promotion. But <laughs> shows you how much I've used them. This duel, this run, has pretty much been my only saving grace pretty much half the time. But this is why you use this deck, it's got a low deck cost and you're able to make um, G Mami twice. So it's got three power ups, so it's quite good. So we come to the best part of the run now, where we uh, press X and then we listen to music for a minute and a half. So pretty enjoyable. So again, smash X. Du, 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 du. Cool. And we just wait now. So, this is the best part. So, if we got any, don't know if we got any donations or not, but if we don't, then if we do, you can see it. If not, we just. I'll just try and talk over the music, unless you want me, unless you want me to be quiet. Yeah, I'd just like to take this time to mm. remind everyone that we are raising money in support of Young Minds, a charity leading. The fight for a future where all young minds are supported and empowered, whatever the challenge is. Your donations help to make sure that young people get the best possible mental health support and have the resilience to overcome life difficulties. 90% of all your donations will be going to them, and the remaining 10% will be used to support UKSG. Thank you all for your donations. Yes, basically just what he said. Help the cause. So we basically just, <laughs> just sit here, generally. So lucky enough when we beat the uh, second part of the game, I'm not going to make you guys watch this. I'll, uh, I'll just, once we get to the final duel, when, you know, I'll give them the warning about time and then I'll just, uh, I'll just leave it. I mean, I could have debated everybody and told them that um, this was the end of the game. And then everyone was like, oh, clap. I'm like, oh, we still got another, another side to do, but I'm not mean like that. You know. Right, we're in a race against Clock A. Eh? 
don't even want to mash an X for some reason, but there's no need to. I was just mashing it, like, trying to hopefully I would make it go quicker. But, yeah. So we just click continue here and then it loads our save and then we do the other side. So lucky thing about this as well, we don't have to redo the deck edit. I could have just, you know, what you could do if this feature wasn't in the game, you only need both sides. You could just do new game, click the same side, the other side and then do deck edit again. But the game lets you um, just do the same side again. So we just boom, click uh, settle side and now we do the game for our same deck. So lucky enough, this side is, uh, this is quicker to start as well. And the reason why we do the other side first is because the end of Seto's side has a longer end, like, text stream when he talks about, you know, all his rubbish. That takes longer than on when you side with Yugi to start with. And then the timer ends when, you've, when you uh, finish the final duel. So that's why. So that's why you uh, do this side first, the last. And also the the other side can be seen as the hardest one because you've got Pegasus, Lab Killer, those are Lab Ruler, um, Richard, Seto. So you're going to check if you get Okazaki, don't have Okazaki in your turn. So again you might be like, oh why not play a card in front of you? Because she'll play a bunch of monsters and then she'll move one to the left, she'll play another bunch of monsters, move it to the right and then you can just put the card right in front of her. However, you want a fuel spell, but if I don't get a fuel spell, I might just dump a bunch of cards, make Muka Muka, make really powerful. Because we don't have a zombie to make. Um, we don't. Have, you know, we actually. I will make. People might not agree with this. I'm gonna make Sword Art Dragon. So what you can do is make a warrior and a dinosaur, and it'll make um, Sword Arm of Dragon. Seventeen hundred and fifty damage. And Tails monsters are quite weak. So hopefully I can kill it. But again, she'll move that forward. She'll move it forward till it's on Milton. Probably should wait to get... Okay, I was going to be very annoyed if I got a fuel spell there and I didn't use it. Cool. So again, she just uh, did lots of damage to herself. And what I can do now is, as attacker, oh, I lose a hundred cheers. I can attack her again because she's already not moved her deck leader. And then I can. Um, wait, I might just win. I just win. Cool. Didn't even need to summon over the card. I just win anyway. So that's tail. Pretty easy deal. Uh, move forward. End your turn. Move forward. Move forward. And you just keep moving forward pretty much. The ideal strategy is to get a fuel spell, play it right in front of her, so the mountain becomes darker, wasteland, and is stronger. So. Probably sitting too close to the mic, I'm gonna lean back now, my back's getting a bit sore. Settle casual. Yeah, so basically because of the hourglass, we basically just won that because she lost more damage, most lost more life points, which is what LP is, in case you didn't guess. That is terrible. <laughs> but I guess d -hole means I can attack next turn, and I kept Violet Crystal, so I've got a good chance of getting a really strong monster. Where, apart from d -hole, that hand was terrible. So again, dimension hole, D hole, shorten it, makes life easier. Yeah, so uh, as I was saying, if we get three cards of in the graveyard slot machine, uh, I'm gonna make Zombie Warrior because we're not getting lucky with these hands. But no, now we won't win. Um, 
If you get three fake traps, you don't get anything. Because fake traps are there just a be filler. So I'm going to move my deadly before because I need to, because uh, Zombie Warrior won't win the duel. And he's most likely going to do that. It's a weak monster anyway. Doesn't do that much damage. So always, I would always check my hand. What I could have done is just move Zombie Warrior, attack with Zombie Warrior, then summon another card and won that way. However, by checking my hand and having Slate Warrior, I just save time. But if you don't have a card, then you, it's just a bit... You're still having to summon a card anyway to attack, so you're not wasting any time. You're actually saving time instead of attacking first. It works in some cases, not other ones. So again, we're coming up to another duel that I might lose once or twice, which is my... Um, basically her full, uh, her full field is pretty much Milton, but around the edges it's Wasteland and you want to basically try and bait her to move into Wasteland because she, she's another duelist that has a deck leader that can move twice, a two tile sorry. So she always moves to her left, so you're right if you have a card in front of her. So I might get lucky, I might get a fuel spell and then get a strong monster, she'll move away and then you can always attack her again because your deck leader is right in front of her to be able to attack. Uh, okay. Uh, so again, if you play a monster right in front of you, um, she has her monsters are crazily strong. They're all like, as I said, all harpy ladies. You know, she also these power ups, harpy lady dragons. It's you know, it's not not a fun experience to be honest. Okay, we're going to switch this up actually. I'm going to hope that's not a monster. It probably is a monster, but I'm going to think it's a weak monster. I'm going to bait her to move to her left and we're going to play d -hole. We're going to move her that way instead. Got d a bit late. Um, so either she moves and then she kills the monster or she kills the monster and doesn't move. So she moved. Oh, she moved one space, so we know she's going to kill the monster. And then she, Okay, so 2,500. That was, that was a wild guess with my eyes closed. We're getting a Harpy Lady, so like I say, that's only got 1300 damage, but because it's on Milton, it's really strong. I'm gonna, move, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait playing Wasteland. I wanna see what she does, because if I move here, she must move into me, and then I can attack her. Then Harpy Lady. Okay, she's good. Okay. So that's gotta be a. So is that not a monster? It is. Okay. So again, as you can see, we're playing with massive uh, fire here because we've only got 400 life points left, and I'm really scared that King Tiger is gonna make us lose. So what we can do is I want to play the field spell so bad, and I can do, but then she'll start moving away. So I'm just going to power up Slate, I'm going to discard Gruesome Goo here, and then I'm going to get r just get rid of the um, the Winged Eagle. So wait, so Harpy... So I moved down, she can... We might still lose because she can just move forward and attack me with her monster. So she's not done that, that's... Uh, very kind of you. So this just turns into her running away. It's quite enjoyable. So now she's got no monsters near me, I can just move and then start attacking her. Uh, okay, we can move and play... <laughs> oh, I should have discarded more cards. Yeah, I forgot to just wipe my hand there. My bad. So what we can do is... Um, the problem is here is she most likely is not going to move away and she's just going to attack me and win. Which, like I say, we can. This is expected, but she's not okay because this duel is such a pain. However, she didn't run away. That's a positive. So if we get, I should have just discarded my hand because I could have got a really strong monster. So what we can do is we can make a uh, eighteen hundred monster here, then pull it up, and it'll be twenty three hundred, and it's a hundred more. It needs three hundred more. Okay, it's got acid trap hole. So what I'm going to do now is just in case she can't attack me and I've got a double movement, I'm going to move him. I'm going to do that. 
because she most likely won't move away. And she'll summon to her left. I can move my deck leader back to where it was. And then we can start doing the same pattern again. And I'm going to guess that card in attack is uh, too weak to beat Slate Warrior. Thank you. I didn't, oh, I didn't get a zombie. Um, actually, we win. We win. We win. We win. I just realised we win. Slate Warrior's got 2700. She's got 2600. We win. We did my first time, but we did it in a very strange way, but we did it. That's all I really care about, as long as we get these duels done. So, next up is Joey, I think? No, no, it's Mako. So, again, this is the funny thing about this, you know... This can be sort of realistic because you're on land, you know, you're going to her castle. This is in water, and Mako's like, oh, you can get past if you beat me at a children's card game. And you're like, okay, I'll beat you at the children's card game, and you'll let me, you know, closer to Yugi. There we go. Oh yes guys, like I said, I saw it quickly there. I used Green Kappa to win. You know what to do guys. You know what to do. Ah, <laughs> uh, I know. That's what I like to see. It's the only Twitch thing I can think of, apart from when I lose, you can just like laugh at me or something. Yeah, we got d -ho. Um Don't play d -ho or not. So I played d -ho here. I'm going to do it, but I'm most likely going to expect him to play a water monster his top left and attack me. Usually if we don't get any like monster cards or like we get field spells, he'll tend just to play a, mo a card on his top right. So he played it in the middle. So if he doesn't move away, we can attack him next turn, if he moves it forward. Okay, he moved it there. Uh, what did I get? Hmm, interesting. Um, I'm going to tank the hit here. Um, also, I'm going to discard my full. Oh, okay. You know what, guys? I'll keep Green Kappa for the memes. Because I can. And it's probably going to be good because he's probably going to summon Aqua Dragon. So we're going to summon Pumpkin King here. And of course, it's not going to be that strong because it's on water and his monster's going to be probably stronger. So he's going to get a decent amount of damage onto me when he attacks me directly, then attack Pumpkin King. But I'm hoping he moves and then I get a really strong monster. Preferably Mika Mika. So he moved exactly. Okay. So this is fine. Either attacks me. So it's a go. So it's 1800. So, it, oh yeah, that card moves behind me, I forgot. It's a very strange monster. So again, if we get Yami, we win. Um, anything like that. Uh, yay. I need to make sure, actually, um, it gets hit by uh, Pumpkin King. It might not, does it? It does, nice. So we win now. Uh, I had to make sure, I was like, trying to think to myself, I was like, is it going to get hit? Boop. And we beat him by 100, which is nice. Yeah, so again, the fun thing with this game is like, I'll, I'll use a Tag Force as an example as a Yugo game. Tag Force, you spend 20 minutes on deck edit and putting passwords in, making the perfect deck. But this game, you know, how many, you, you, there's a lot of cards you don't tend to use. You just use them as discards for um, Muka Muka or like I saw like Sword Arm, the sword card. You don't use it unless it's for a warrior. So. So Joey's another fun duel that can get a bit annoying if you don't get the kind of... If you want a feel spell to put a mountain or lesser dragon. Because... We'll get him to move forward into us here. However, the problem is because he's, he's on mountain, the zombie monsters do less damage. So you really want Yami 
or something. So he'll move down. Yeah, move my deck leader. Oh, look what we got. Perfect hand for this duel. Exactly, the top deck. I, I mean, there's probably other ways you can do this perfectly. I say this is the perfect way. Because I'm pretty sure I don't even need to play uh, G Mammy. I can just summon the um, the base card, uh, Mammy of Graveyard, and it'll have enough damage because of Wasteland. Because Pumpkin King's going to have 2300, or does it? Yeah, so it's going to be exactly enough, I'm pretty sure, if my maths is correct. If I remember what uh, Mammoth Graveyard has. Yeah, it's enough. And we also got Lesser Dragon as well, so... So we move on to... I think it's Shady, which um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about when we get there. About something to do with his, um, his picture, is quite funny. So take a look at the top right. Is that the shady you remember from the anime? It's not what I remember. I remember him not being white, that's all I'm saying. But he's white in this game for some reason. But Ishtar's not, so if you, you can't really use it, you know, oh, and you know, 1400s. No, it's just, they made shady not what he was in the anime for some reason. So we've got Mooka Mooka and King Tiger here. Um, so we're just going to discard cards for Mooka Mooka. If you move, if you place a card on Wasteland too early, he won't move on to Wasteland. He'll mo move on to um, the forest, and Mooka Mooka gets, doesn't get double movement speed. I also kind of forgot about King Tiger dying on Crush, but he doesn't move. He just stays where he does anyway. He doesn't tend to move forward. He always plays Thunder, Thunder Yang Yang defense mode. I got D hole, but it doesn't really matter because I'm hoping to win next turn anyway. I move this forward. He probably knows it's not a monster, but he tends to move to the right. So I think he, think he knows it's not a monster here. Okay. So we need, now need to summon a monster because we need him to move like to the right of us. You know what? Um, this this could work. Actually, I should, sorry if I made that noise too close to the mic there. Um, I'll use the feel spell because it should affect him here. Very unorthodox way to do this, but now there's no crush, so Mooka Mooka gets double movement everywhere. And if he's got, if that's what, I don't think it is going to be, uh, it's going to be lower than 1400, but it might be a double movement, he might attack me. I'll keep Okazaki, I'll remove the hole, don't need it. So I'm gonna attack this this card here. 800. Muka has got 3500, so that's 27. Okazaki, with Okazaki, that becomes 800. So he's gonna start running away, but we'll catch him. To me, I might even play Okazaki. I might just chase him down with Muka He can't defend himself forever. Oh no, I can just win actually. Yeah. Didn't even need to move Mooka Mooka, my bad. So, Okazaki along with the field spells and power-ups is a very useful card because, you know, you can be on duels where they're really low. You get Okazaki, you just win. You win off Okazaki. Or, it can be useless. <laughs> So we now move on to the the most RNG, m more RNG in Seto, I'd say, because at least with Seto you have control over what cards you can place. You need a lab killer first turn, and with my other people, I'm gonna use a uh, fuck trio. He's one of the people I'll show at the end. He uses three lab killers as deckhead. I only use two. I mean, didn't get one. 
So what we do is you just start dumping cards until you get the lab killer. So we could be here a while. But as long as you stay on one star, it helps. Because on one star, it means you can summon Barrel Rock, which is four star. And what did I tell you? So there's Barrel Rock. So I'm going to make sure we can actually... It won't freeze or anything. However, now we can only summon three star monsters next turn. Which is a bit annoying. So he should move forward and not defend himself. Perfect. So we get attack him again and then he'll move himself to the corner maybe. Because most cards he plays in defense mode are um, the pieces of Exodia. And if you didn't see there... Um, the pieces of Exodia... You won't have saw, sorry. Balrog only has... Um, ten hundred has a thousand damage. And the pieces of Exodia on Yami, or Dark, sorry, have 1100 defense. So, zombie, like Balrog or anything, can't kill. And because he moved that card out of the way, we actually win. So, okay, we don't win because he has Acid Trap Hole. We win next turn. But, it's pretty good the fact that we got the Lab Killer quite quick. It um, brings back the time that we lost. Uh, again, I just made this card. And this should be 1800 is, so um, I could either attack next turn or I can play Okazaki. So we have options to win, so it doesn't matter. So he defended himself here. So what I can do, so what I need to do anyway is do this. Uh, I'll just attack him. Won't use Okazaki, so... So we're actually coming up towards the last three duels. Uh, Bakura. I think it is. Bakura, Yugi, and then Chakra. I also never I never noticed when I did Mai, I never really looked at her name or anything to see if it is actual. Like her second name is like what it would be. Because if, if the lore is correct and Mai is Yugi's mum, then Jasper is, of course, um, you know, related to Mai as well. We have 40 minutes to estimate. Can I do it, guys? Three duels. Come on. Surely. Believe in myself. So, we're already past my PB, so that's not... We can't PB this run. This hand is not good. The only positive is um, Green Cap will get powered up by uh, a card. And then it won't die on Crush. So what you want in a realistic play in this is you want Slate Warrior and then him to move forward because then Slate Warrior gets double movement on the slate uh, in the crush. And that's very sad. I'm gonna hope he doesn't move forward or move away. No player card in front of him. He moved away. That's fine. If he moves that forward, it's good. I can kill the card anyway. Good. Thank you. Of course I get, of course I get um, Slate over here turn too late. That's just Yu-Gi-Oh! RNG 101, isn't it? So his card, because it's on Crush, or it was on Crush, it's not going to be a strong monster. But Slate Warrior will win next turn anyway, so... So, again, just been glancing at chat, and everybody's talking about 100%. So 100%, as we don't have it as a category, everybody memes about it. It'll take, you know, how long it would take. So, think about how many times you need to do the duels to get every card of every duelist, and then to line up your graveyard slot to get every special card as well. It's, it's, and then you also need to know every password in the game. So when you think about it, it's really like just not worth it. It would be like a for the memories run how long it would take. 
They vote RNG manipulation, of course. I know two duels here, Yugi. And then, so Yugi is D hole Slate Warrior, or uh, Lab Killer. We got D hole So we're gonna dump our hand, but we're gonna. No, no. Actually, you know what? We're not. We're not gonna dump. Most, we're actually gonna dump one card here. The Yami could come in very handy. I probably should. Nah, 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 nah. Next time. Because what you can do, I'll show you a little trick you can do. And I did it on my practice run, and it worked. He didn't defend himself on Crush. So, what, but it doesn't matter. So, because you didn't, why did you not activate D hole on turn two or turn one, Dean? Well, activate D hole now. Move deck leader forward, and then you get a summon um, G Mammy for twenty two hundred, and then he'll move along. If he if he doesn't protect himself. You play Yami on where he is now. Double movement speed, G Mami wins the duel, and that's you done Yugi in like three turns. Oh, he moves on to Crush. Moves on to Crush, same thing. Which means you still play Yami and win anyway. Unless I get Slate Warrior. So, what he tends to do is. If you don't get any decent like cards at start, you tend to play a Polarizing Potion on the Crush. He baits you into moving on there. And just like that, we're on the last duel already. So it went from me being at like 50 minutes on Seto to then up being at the last duel in the space of what, 20 sort of minutes, 30 minutes? So it's pretty good. This, this, this part of the game is really short in comparison to the other part. But we come to the last Mash X part. If you're also, if you've noticed, we've not lost since uh, our fourth loss to what Keith, I think it was. Or was it Necromancer? No, it wasn't Necromancer. I'm pretty sure I got that quite lucky. I think I've worked out in the end as well. Yeah, so uh, Yugi and Seto can summon their, of course, their um, Dark Magician and Blue Eyes, but they never, because just they never got a chance, or they never drew it, or the game didn't let them. So again, don't think there's any donations, but if there was, this would be the best time, because this is the last part of the game. And then, well, you can do them at the end of the world, to be honest, but... Should be no losses. Four. Bad. No true duelist loses duels. So you gotta be Yugi and basically lose ne not lose any unless the big green circle of Olicalcos makes you forfeit because you're gonna lose because of power and blah 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 and you lose Yugi and you're all sad and whatever. So this is Chakra. That's sad. Um, um, you want a good monster because you want to bomb it forward because most likely he's going to play. I'm not, I can't remember the name of the card. He'll play it. He didn't play it. I'm intrigued what that card is now. It won't be a strong monster, it's going to be under 3. I'll be under three stars. I'm interested. I'm gonna attack it, and then if, I, if it kills, if I lose, I'll just surrender and try again. There's that. That's what the card is. That Giga Gate Dragy thing. Well, Slate Warrior is now a zombie, so it's a double movement. So the, the issue we have now is he's got 12 stars, and we don't have a card in front of him that has good power ups. Um. However, we are gonna play Slate Warrior in front of us because it's still gonna have the crush effect in case he does summon some crazy monster to kill. We can at least have the crush in front of us. Here we go, 12 stars, fusion, probably Meteor Dragon. Oh, what a great guess. Now, the annoying thing is here, everything's crush. But if we're on crush, I don't, we don't I think you can attack us. So this changes the aspect of this duel, because usually you have yammy double movement. So... So I'm actually going to use a uh, Cyberstein here because Cyberstein, when you attack, um, not like in the like Yu-Gi-Oh tag force or anything, where you pay 5,000 life points to summon a fusion monster or whatever it is. 
this duel that in this game it places a wasteland spot where you are. So again, we can summon top right now in front of him if he doesn't place a card where I want to summon. And we have Megamore. So again, we get a good hand, we win. He won't attack because he's on crush. Cool. That works. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to place Wasteland here because it'll give Dragon Zombie a power up and then double movement next turn in case he doesn't move again. I'm going to guess though he's holding out for... Um, more stars to summon his crazy OP monsters, but like I said, I'm hoping he doesn't place it well, but I think he's going to place it. He did. Damn. Move along? Okay. So I'm hoping for g Mammy here. Anything. Thank you. So if g Mammy's not enough here to win this, then we're pretty much not going to win this. This is what? 30,000? 30, uh, 30, it's got to be, surely. Yeah, it's nice. So now, the only way he can run away now is by moving on to where Cyberstein is. And, and I can summon over it. But it's not on Wasteland though, so it's a bit of an issue. And we win. So, get ready to time, guys. I'll tell you when, of course. I'll count it down. So, this is 3, 2, 1, time. So. Because you'll need to do the credits now, I can basically just leave, but I'll thank, of course, thank everybody. So, thank all the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses people that I speak to and all that. You, you know, you are Gatch, Fog, uh, Torp, Tagor, um, JR, there's probably other ones. Sorry if I don't remember you all. Um, G, oh, Scott, the other Scottish guy, Mad Scientist, um, you know, all you, are you in chat? See if I can find you there, but you're all here, you know who you are. But yeah, so like I said, that's the end of the game. You stop the timer there, you don't have to time it all. Um, bang on, four minutes under estimate. A Yu-Gi-Oh game, it doesn't go over estimate. It's crazy, I know, but that's it. First time in for everything. But yeah, that's me pretty much done with this. So thank you all for the donations. Hope you enjoy the last two runs as well, and I will see you all later. Yeah, that'd be
And welcome back to the United Kingdom Speedrunner Gathering Winter 2019. Thank you for watching our event, a two-day speedrunning marathon held four times a year. We're coming to you live from Glasgow, Scotland. I'm Paul Lister, and for the remaining two runs, I will be your host. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our charity here. We are raising money to support Young Minds, a charity leading the fight for a future where all Young Minds are supported and empowered, whatever the challenge is. Your donations help them to make sure young people get the best possible mental health support and have the resilience to overcome life's difficulties. 90% of all your donations will be going to them, the remaining 10% will be used to support UKSG. And if you want your donation comment to be read with the dulcet tones of my tired voice, go ahead and donate now. We would like to thank ESA for supporting this marathon. Besides providing us with their channel for streaming, they are sharing gear, technical assistance, and sponsors. Be sure to check out ESA Winter from the 16th to the 24th of February. We would also like to thank PSG for supporting us. They hold bi-monthly speedrunning gatherings in the Netherlands for people in the Net Benelux region. They have supported UKSG from the beginning by spreading the word and providing us with a channel to stream on in past sessions, among other things. Be sure to catch their 28th event from the 2nd to the 3rd of March. Now, do you want to get updates for when our marathons go live and when your favorite runs are coming up? Then make sure you follow us on Twitter at UKSG Marathon. That's at UKSG Marathon, no spaces, no underscores. Also, if you use hashtag UKSGW19, no spaces, no underscores, you may be featured on stream in the Omni Bar.
Just as a quick reminder, if you have Twitch Prime, that means that you're very rich. Nah, I'm just kidding. You have a free subscription that you can use on the channel, so why not use it?
It looks like we are ready. Uh, we are ready with Magical Knight Ray Earth by our good friend Mijitsu. Good luck, Mijitsu, and let's get started.